The following presentation was recorded at the Buddhist Society of Victoria, Malvern East, Australia. Please visit our website at bsv.net.au. Uh, how to deal with uh, stressful situations, which they tend to come in life. Okay, let's talk about that. So what happened is I had a lot of expectations. I still have a lot of expectations. We're building a new monastery, and or not, not the whole monastery, but the monk side, building huts for monks and building a Sangha house office, everything, everything going well. You're hoping you have the, you know, all these ideas. And then when your ideas don't come exactly happen how you were planning they would be, you get disappointed. And it's almost, I feel it's almost worse. I felt, <clears throat> it was an interesting experience this week. Um, the, the quality of the workmanship sometimes in Australia it lacks. Uh, and it just leaves something to, to, to be desired. And I've always been uh, um, very meticulous. I've worked in construction many years myself, and I was always very meticulous when I was doing it, actually. I work with my my brother quite a f many years, and he's always like, you know, stop it. You just have to, you know, leave it at some point. I'm always just trying to get everything right, and no matter what the customer is, whether we get paid by hour, whether we have contract, I, I always uh, did the best I could. And now that I see certain things that you know not, are not done on the on really on the best interest on their heart, and uh, and they start arguing back, and you know it gets personal. That's where it gets really difficult for me. And, and I I must really say that first time I've really understood what it means where your parents sometimes say, you know, I cannot be angry at you, but I'm disappointed. And I understood what it. I never really I. You, you cannot understand really as a, when your mother tells you that, you know, like they, they, they love me no matter what, but they are disappointed what happened. So that's what I felt this week. I couldn't be angry with the young fellas working over there. They're just young guys and, you know, they just want to, and the system is built up. So in, in the industry, I think these days that it rewards you moving faster and faster. So, you, you know, you do your job really quickly and then you move on to another one. And if you do it really quickly, you know, the, you know they, they pay you extra for that. So what happens then the, you cannot expect really the quality to be really high. If you, you know, you don't pay for the quality, you pay for that. It's get done quickly. And then the customer, us, as the Buddhist society, and I'm, I'm really, my job is to protect the Buddhist societies. Uh, or every individual donations. It is my duty to protect the um, whatever it's been, you know, donated. It's my duty to make sure that the, the funds get used correctly. They are go, you know, and you, some, there's people who donated huts, what we call the cooties. They give a lot of money for that. I have to. It's not because they come to me. I might not even live in those huts. Uh, I'm, you know, they are donated for the sangha which is the monks and nuns, in this case it's the nun monks because it's the monk side we're building now. It's my job to make sure that they get used correctly and I, I, um, it's my job to make sure that you know, the, the quality is how it should be done. So I, I feel stress, I feel, you know, I, I feel I haven't, I need to do it. I, there's, it's my duty to do that. And it, it becomes this kind of thing where it's, I've lived so many years now in the monastery, I can always expect that my fellow monastics do things in the best of their heart. And it was so disappointing for me again, see that it's just this lack of care which the you know, society runs on. It, it was, uh, it's an interesting experience sort of come now back into this almost like lay life to work with these you know, people, which I'm not used to after so many years of being in a monastic where you cannot, there's no trust or, and my expectations, if I had something, I cannot trust that they just do something well. And like I said, the, 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 the thing I felt was this, it's it just not like, I, and it was quite nice actually, I've, I, 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 I could have, felt anger towards them and I, you know, I, I did get upset and I have to apologize to the job manager probably on Monday that I got upset with him and I said, you know, this is not how it should be done. I, 
I was quite firm with him. Uh, but I could not fault the young fellows. It's not really, really their fault. And I felt, if anything, I felt good about myself because of that, that I had enough meta from my previous practice all these years that I had enough meta and kindness understanding that that's how world works. It's going to let me down. It's, it's nobody's fault. It's how the world works. It's how it's built into, into the, into the society. It's built into human nature. It's built into humanity. We cannot expect too much. Ajahn Brahm always has to, you know, he, he puts it quite ni nicely. We, you know, we expect 70% and that's good enough. This went bit below 70. I would say we were, uh, you know, 20%. So I'm trying to get to the 70% when we're doing this building. So uh, I'm trying to raise a bar at least a little bit higher. But um, so it was, it was quite stressful. I mean, and then there's these little things like, okay, the internet wasn't working for a week. I mean, how annoying is that? You know, like you need to do your emailing and you know how it is. Are you call and there's these ladies answering in Philippines and they say, yeah, we're working on this. Like, I know this is like the fifth time I called you guys. Like what? Oh, yes, yes. Rest assured we'll, you know, fix this issue. And it's like, and I couldn't get angry at them either. They are, you know, raising their families in the you know, Philippines. They don't get that, paid that much. They get, they have to listen to these people every day. So I had to put extra care. I said, yeah, I understand. It's not your fault. Okay, we wait for another day. And then we wait another day. And a week later, it's just miraculously appeared. Nobody did anything. And the internet started working. They, they, they finally take call from the internet company. On, and they said, you know, like, okay, you claim this. It was an Aussie fellow then calling. And like, you know, we fixed this issue. I said, it's fixed already. And he just go, whoa. The... <laughs> I think it was the Davis protecting us for a week not to having internet. We, maybe they were looking. I was getting a bit too carried away with that. Um, but th that's what life gives. You know, life is, it's like you, we're rushing to go from work to work. We're rushing to go to work in the morning to get the work done. We're rushing to go back home. That's how, it, it's, it's just a teaching. That's how our life works. All of us, we're rushing to be you know, young adults, teenagers. We're rushing to be the finish the school. We, you know, finally, we, you know, I'm done with the school. So many years of studying, that's enough. We're rushing into the work. We're coming back home. Where are you rushing? You're going rushing into your cemetery. You, you have a nice grave. Then you can rest. No, don't wait. Rest now. The, it's just, the, you know, it was just another teaching for me, and it's, it is... It is, it's a hard to take sometimes these things in life, but no, no matter what it is, it's not like we have to go looking for them, they come to you. And uh, these are the times when I've noticed that this is now, if any, any time, the practice has to, you know, you really, I have to practice more. I have to make sure I put effort to be kinder. I have to put, make sure that I put effort to have understanding of that what the building company, the internet company, the other people you know you're dealing with, what they can give you, and I have to put understanding what my I can myself I can give, what I can. There's only so much my mind is willing to deal with. I had to understand that. I, I started to get, you know, chest pain, and I was just started to get the pain in my in my shoulders again. I was just probably holding up my my shoulders up again, and I noticed that it's not my fault. It's just, you know, this is how it works, and it's not. I can I can make somehow make it better, and I'm I don't I'm never going to suffer again. It's not going to happen. That's the Buddhist teaching. I will suffer. I'm not going to be smart somehow to get go beyond the suffering. The only thing I can, you know, how do you relinquish suffering? Don't get born. That's the only thing I can do. That's the best you can do. Have the lean towards some direction in your life, towards Nibbana, basically, towards the Buddha's teaching. Have respect towards the Sangha and the teachings and 
then you will get smarter, but not smarter in a way that you will avoid suffering, you will uh, you avoid stress. It's not going to happen. It will, it's lurking somewhere, you know, like, oh, you have a beautiful life in a monastery where you live amongst a nice monastics and, you know, a lot of understanding. And everybody, we, we, uh, we're working towards the same goal. And I meet such a wonderful people in these Buddhist societies and anywhere I go, we get treated so well. And it just hits you on the face. And what an what a interesting week it's been. I'm I'm so happy to be back here. Actually, I'm, I finally get to see some nice, yeah, you know, familiar faces, and it's um, once in a while. I mean, the, it gets a bit lonely sometimes. I'm I'm I don't I spend a lot of time in my room by my myself, and and this week, and I, the only thing I could it's like I could try to distract myself. I was just trying to sleep, and I would just uh, go to sleep, and I'm thinking of something, and then I wake up, and it's still there. And I said, that's enough. I mean, I, no matter how much I was trying to distract myself, I, uh, the bad smell just kept following me. I could not stop my thinking. I absolutely could not stop it. And it's horrible when you see yourself, the disappointment just kept following me. And I had this uh, inter, uh, inner dialogue with these tit for tat. It was like, I, I will say this, and then they would return this, and I would say this back, and then, you know, and it would just keep going and going, and I said, okay, stop, now, okay, go for a walk, and then sit down, and it just kept coming back to me. And I, I could not leave it behind, no matter what I did. It's almost like all of those years of, these tra years of training, as if they were never there. I could not stop my mind. And it was... Uh, it, what a, uh, it was not. It wasn't pleasant to look at my mind again. How it's um, to see those things coming back. We all have those things. The, just the looping thoughts and all these things. And life, you know, ser serves us these things as a teaching once in a while. The only thing what came to my mind finally, I said, "That's it. I just have to sit down. Whatever happens, happens. I just have to take." I decided, I said, you know, it was a, after my morning work, came back to my room and I said, I sit until lunchtime and no matter what, I just don't get up from my seat. I just, I just hold my ground. That's the only thing I could do. If there's nothing to do, Ajahn Brahm has that, Ajahn Brahm's famous teaching, nothing to do, don't do anything. I tried everything other thing. I tried to, at least I didn't, you know, I didn't go really start hating these people. At least I had enough loving kindness in my mind, but the looping thoughts were there. What can I do? I could not do anything. So I just sat down and I said, whatever happens, I just have to sit down here for a while. And it's interesting, after a while, you know, first of all, it was just the same thinking. Then I fell asleep. And then I woke up from the sit, and then uh, and the mind just went calmer and calmer and quieter, and eventually it lost the, the really the the heavy stuff. It didn't completely disappear, you know. It, it keeps surfacing. But since I have the training, I know that I you know I don't keep grasping into that. Whatever happens, I have to, as a monk, sometimes I have to hold my ground against my own mind. And I just said, you know, I'm just sitting here and the, the, surf, the, the things get surfacing and they, you know, they calm down. And I had maybe 15 minutes of quiet time and then they came back again. But just that 15 minutes of quietness is enough if you're able to hold your ground. If you keep running away from the things in life, if you just keep distracting yourself, go on, you know, whatever you do, you watch telly, you go on and see a football game, you go on a holiday, you watch the news, or anything what, you know, makes you distracted. Sometimes it's good, but sometimes the only thing to do is hold your ground. That's it. I'm, I'm going to sit here and I just have to look at my, my own mind, and it's not pleasant. And most of people are not willing to do that. It's not, sometimes it's not, it's not very beautiful to look at your own mind. If things go well, 
and it's you know you have a lot of meta in your heart it's it's really easy the mind tends to quiet you know quiet down really easily but sometimes we have those storms in the life and they do come and they slap you in the face and there's nothing you can do about it remember don't do anything just hold your ground Ajahn Chah had the simile of, you know, there's the, you know, two kind of farmers and the other one collects the good, good things in life. They go into the, in the chicken shed and, you know, the smart farmer picks up the eggs and, you know, he's the smart farmer because, he, you know, he's actually picking the eggs and makes something nice out of it. And those are the, you know, even these difficult things, those are the eggs we're picking up and make something out of it. You make a nice cake out of that. And there's the stupid farmer who goes in the shed and leaves the eggs behind, doesn't realize those are the ones you should be picking and picks up the chicken shit. And, you know, what, and that's what I was doing. I was just picking up the bad things about these things. Most of the project, seriously, if you come there two weeks, I'll, I, I take you to the side and it's going really well. We have the, that's an interesting thing. It's like most of the thing is going right, but... I'm so meticulous about certain things and just those things just failed. And what I did, I was the stupid farmer. I was the one who was stuffing my pockets with chicken shit. And I was sitting there and I, was, I could not see anything. It's like you, you, you sit on the beach and your children are playing there and you know, sun is shining and everything is nice. What do you see? You just see those mistakes. Those are the real things where you don't have enough wisdom. The Buddha said, to be smart, it's, that's not being mindful. You're not being wise on those moments. And I realized that. Everywhere I went, I was carrying the shit in my front pocket. And it was just kept smelling. And I kept sniffing my front pocket. And it smelled bad. But I could not help but to do it. So I just had to say, that's, you know, that's enough. I have to just hold my crown and just let the smell be there not to try to you know run away from it because it was coming it will come with you it will follow you anywhere you go sometimes you just have to say that's in that's it i have to now use this as the fertilizer you put it underneath the you know the mango tree like ajahn Brahm says i don't like mangoes they don't agree with me i i don't like apples either what do i like i don't know where to put it radishes no potatoes we, my family used to potato farms go into your potato field and you know fertilize it with your chicken shit and then you have nice potatoes make uh, what's a nice, anyways what whatever is nice potato dish i was a chef also so anyway so make something nice out of the potatoes the um the we have to be able to use those things not to look negatively on these things but i said yes i i it was my job to do this thing i had to hold my ground to make sure that you know the buddhist society of victoria's uh what we're giving to the buddhist society donations get used correctly it's my job to even though it gets abusive sometimes that's my job to make sure that it's done correctly and for the sangha who will follow to stay in those places that it's, uh, it's done correctly, not because of myself. And even if I had the expectations were really high, I could not blame myself for that. It was just, it, it, it's what it is. It's um, my way of doing things and the world didn't agree with it. Most times it doesn't. And it's, like I said, when I, when I started, don't expect too much from the world. You have your expectations lower your expectations and if your expectations get crushed your your partner didn't turn out as the dream which i don't think most of the time it turns out like a dream uh, you just have to expect ex, you know expect that in from the beginning and then when the world brings you down the expectations you realize this is the reality take it as as it is it's it's the it's human nature you had the expectation it's not your fault and it's not the fault of the partner either this is what you know men do this is what women do this is what you know relationships are 
this is what work can offer us. It can only give us so much satisfaction in the work life. It can only um, serve a certain purpose. Don't, don't try to think it's going to you know, be otherwise. And uh, unfortunately, the, the, this is the practice. And this, it was a quite nice, you know, nice thing to realize. And I think sometimes um, in Asia, as monks, we get treated really, really nicely. I go to Thailand and um, uh, some monk one time asked, it was a Sri Lankan monk, he asked Ajahn Brahm, how, how do you make the, uh, you know, the monks getting arrogant in Sri Lanka, what, you know, how do you make them less arrogant? Ajahn said them, sent them to Australia. And it's, it's true. It's, you deal with Aussie prickies and, and builders and all that. It's the arrogance drops away quite quickly. There is no extra nice treatment for monks. If anything, you know, there's like, they ask him, what do you, what, how do you, you know, what, um, you don't know what you're talking about. And I said, yeah, I do know what I'm talking about. Um, it tends to drop you off from the stool, which is, it's all right. I mean, it's, it's we just human human beings as well. And the, the Sangha itself is what matters. I know, I do realize that very, very um, clearly that as an individual, I don't, I don't matter. The, the, the Sangha is the, the stronger entity here, the monks and nuns. Same in Newbury, it's, you look at the, um, I look at the other monks and nuns and, I'm included into that, but I'm just part of it. The, the teachings of the Buddha matter, but we have to practice them. And if, if you just, uh, if you think, if you treat Buddhism as a religion, uh, it doesn't make that much difference. If you, if you treat the, the Buddha out of it, that you don't have respect to the Buddha as the first teacher, that he actually did know something, then it only takes you so far. You have to have a little bit of faith and you have to have practice and you have to um, keep at it. That's the only thing we can do. But who knows? Tomorrow's Monday, maybe it's going to be better again. I don't think so, but <laughs> 70%, good enough. I mean, and it's it, really appreciate to uh, I can come here to teach and to... Um, see every every one of you because it's it's almost like a break for us you i'm in the monastery and the monastery is now my workplace so it has turned into instead of having a sense of peace there it's like a sense of duty so here i feel sense of um community so it's a nice feeling okay let's have some questions so maybe i can if, is there anything online yet Thank you, Bhante. Oh, the online question is, when practicing metta meditation, my heart area has sharp pains and a sense of rawness. Is this to be expected when one is just beginning metta practice? Why does this happen? I don't know. Uh, uh, why would you... The, the, the interesting thing, it is true, like I said, I had this this week, um, I started to notice that I have enough mindfulness after being a, in a monastery for 10 years and uh, b b listening to the teachings long enough that there, uh, there's some, your body is an indicator of anything, in what happens in your heart, in your mind, whatever. I like the idea that, you know, and the, we call the... They, they translate the chitta, the mind sometimes as a heart, and it's, it's your heart determines that, you know, in old, in Europe, they used to call your guts, you know, like that's why we have the gut feeling. They used to say, you know, instead of your, oh, your heart, you know, your, your gut feels for this lady, you know, that would be interesting way of saying, it. you're like, oh, my stomach feels that I like this girl. Um, but, you know, that's actually the gut feeling that in, instead of having a heart, you feel for your heart. So if you have enough mindfulness, you, your body acts as an indicator for whatever is in your mind. So my mind um, was really agitated this week. So I start getting uh, chest pain and I start getting pain on my, my shoulder. And to have um, pain in your heart area when you're doing metta meditation, I don't know whether it's because you're just starting or because maybe uh, you're um, concentrating too much on something. That's the thing sometimes where I've noticed that 
I vaguely remember when I started meditating and sometimes people tell as teachers um, that they start meditating and they start noticing all these things maybe in your body or in your mind maybe you, maybe they were they all along but you just didn't even pay attention so sometimes you start paying attention to something and you realize I don't like it but you never noticed that it was there all along you were carrying that everywhere with you before but now that you notice that that's the opportunity is to just like actively start relaxing it yep the chest pain is coming and you know your shortness of breath and the, there is that pain coming on your shoulder it's an indicator of something it uh, your body is it's uh, it's a very very useful tool into those things where you uh, you that's part of the mindfulness practice is that i can see somewhere this again uh, so, something in my body again why is it manifesting and what can i do about it Actively, even, you know, like even um, giving, you know, giving a kindness to your body, giving, giving it an exercise and, you know, take, take your body out like you take your dog for a walk, take your, you know, body for a walk and all those things. You, you treat it nicely. I just think there's a lot of sports these days and, you know, I certainly was in extreme sports myself that it's, you're not kind to your body. Treat your body nicely, you know, give it, give it what it needs and, Certainly, uh, my, me as a monk, um, we have these mindfulness practices. Like every time I eat, I was always taught we have to, we you know we eating instead of just uh, eating to make ourselves fat or which it's happening naturally. It seems to be people tend to overfeed the monks, but um, instead of making myself fat or beautiful and all that, I'm eating to keep my body content. I'm eating to you know sustain my body, to, you know to keep it going from day to day to uh, to have to live the holy life and that's the purpose of this food so and when I look at the food that way that is it should be good for my body I then tend not to overeat so much or indulge in the food it's that's not the purpose of food at least for us monks I mean maybe you want to enjoy it to a certain extent and obviously you have to in enjoy it so the body absorbs it but it's not just you know like almost like an intoxicant and shouldn't be like be that way it should be that it's good for your body and listen to your body what what it needs you know eat things which are good for your body don't go you feel miserable and then you want to eat a tub of ice cream maybe it's not the best thing you know that's there's all these things you you we habitually do where you want to you feel miserable and you want to overeat well, try to have maybe just, like I said, just sit down, hold your ground 15 minutes and then eat the top of ice cream. But at least maybe if you eat, you know, have that, you know, 15 minutes, sometimes you have a little, you know, stand your ground for a little bit. And then you can see like maybe it's not necessary what I'm doing. And that's mindfulness. That's wisdom. That's, you know, you just you're doing something it, something better instead of just being impulsive. I don't know why the pain is there. <laughs> See? <laughs> I, I, it could be that you're just seeing it first time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, Vante, that you're here. That you had a stressful week. Uh -huh. But I wanted to revisit um, your, your lesson of today. Um, what I'm understanding, and probably out loud so I can memorize, uh, it feels to me the turning point was the surrender. Once you surrender to the to the feelings, because no surrender in itself it was a battle in ah, itself. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's a it's a double question. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit. So um, something happened to me this week was quite a, very similar to the to the to the story. I was in a hotel and I was uh, share bathroom, and I was shaving in the morning. This gentleman walks in and look at me, say good morning, very gentle, but he says, oh. What a drag, we need to share bathrooms, and oh, this is painful. He was gentle, but I was like, oh, this is a drag, that's pretty bad. And he walked away. A few seconds later, the same, another man walked in, and he smiled at me and said, good morning, how wonderful, great day. Like, we get to meet new people, we get to say goodbye, mm -hmm. we get to say hi, we get to say mm -hmm. goodbye. And I just thought, like, okay, that's the same bathroom. What's happening here? And that, for me, the lesson was, it's 
I think it's it's a question actually. Mm. It's uh, I feel that not having others around us, living by the same mindsets and the same mm. standards, I personally feel that we don't need to necessarily change the will, but perhaps change the actions mm. and surrender when those actions or the expectations are not met. So the question back to you on, on this whole story yeah. is where I re-engineer my will and where I re-engineer or, or rethink about my actions or my reactions to those mm -hmm. things that don't happen. And where is the surrender, perhaps the first step in changing that, perhaps anger or... Um, or any, any negative uh, feeling you might have mm -hmm. from, from... So it's a complex answer, but a, a question, but I hope There's that like makes sense. There's like five questions by now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, Sorry. No, uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. It, it's an it's interesting story, and it's nice that, you know, when you make it into a story, and then it becomes so vivid in your mind. I know what you're saying exactly. Somebody comes, and one says it's, it's horrible, and another comes, like, maybe you shaved, and then you look better. Um, the... <laughs> I don't think there was a, yeah, the, the, that's the thing exactly right. It's like your perception is skewed to a certain way and, you know, other person's, you know, perceptions. And are we going to change ourselves? No. Don't, that's the Buddhist teaching. We are, don't try to change ourselves. This is not a self-improvement class. Don't try to improve yourself. What we're trying to do is change our perceptions. Really. That's why loving kindness meditation, if you don't have metta, you won't get along in the practice very far. If you don't have softness, kindness in your heart, your meditation will never kick in. It just won't. If you have a, in a rigid mind, controlling mind, you won't, be able to, you won't be able to look your own mind for too long. You can only, you can only tough it out so long. Like I said, you know, like, uh, sure, I said in that you sometimes you just have to sit down and say, but they, I had the enough, you know, in the beginning, enough softness, so it didn't go into hatred. So are we trying to change our will, was your question. The will doesn't belong to you. Your, it, your will belongs to your mother. Your will belongs to your father. Your will belongs to your the society. Your will it doesn't. It, it's that's a, it's a strange concept in Buddhism. There is no self. Will is almost like the worst thing. What people possess in your you know what they hold onto it on onto. This is my will. At least I can make decisions. No, you don't. Don't think you can change your will. You can only change your just you know. Really, you can only see that as it's conditioned. Your will is conditioned. And that's why there's, if there's enlightened beings, if somebody's further on the path, they can see all of these actions I'm doing, this will of mine, it does not belong to me. And that's how it, they are freed from that wrong view of I'm doing something. No, you're not. It's just conditions taking you from one place to another. So don't try to change your will. It's almost like you, you're fighting your own mind. Who's fighting your mind? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a paradox. You cannot fight your, fight your own mind. You, you can't really... It, better thing is, if anything, is to have, you know, have loving kindness, softness, look at kindly your will. Okay, here's my will again. I want to do these things, and I I prefer not to stay in the same bathroom with you know, with other people. Or I pref you know, it's nice to see, uh, nice to see other people in the same hotel uh, in the bathroom when you're shaving in the morning. You can have a conversation, and uh, and it's not yours to change to change anything. The only thing you're changing is we're changing perceptions. We're trying to look at you know world. Kind eyes, compassion, understanding. See, it, it is just samsara rolling and rolling and we're just going with it. And his perception was one way and the other person, when he came, he enjoyed it. Don't start interfering with the world. Unless you do, you know, these other people, uh, you see that, okay, maybe he was, he, that's how he grew up, this and that. You just have understanding towards them. 
and I, yeah, I don't know where else to take this, but it's it's an interesting concept, you know. But I, I would definitely say that don't don't try to th don't think you're gonna change your will. It, it is gonna be there. It's and the stronger you think you have, the, the stronger will you have, the more you're gonna suffer. So have less of a you know what they call the volition to th think you you know you, this is my 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 willing to when I, what's happening here thank you is it bante or is it a john mm. oh, bante now is yeah a oh, yes. <laughs> couple more years and i'll be a oh, john <laughs> hopefully i can make it that was a very good uh, that was a great teaching uh bante it's uh it's the same thing with me when i when i do have some attitude problems with others and it feels like a will yeah. that I, you know, I have to get angry at other people or be nice to other people. What I always do is come back to your meta. Yeah. Whatever I feel, whatever my meta is, my will changes. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yes, exactly. That's good. Okay, good. Yeah. I like that. Um. So I always go to the source first. Mm. And when I, whatever I, uh, if, if I uh, focus on the source, like loving kindness and all that, Everything changes. The will changes. Yeah. The so that's why you changes. see. Yeah, exactly. And it's so it's not permanent. Yes, There's no permanent exactly. essence in your will. It's not like you know you were born with mm. this will and this is just, no. That's it. And and it, it loving kindness. You learned it from the Buddhist you know different yeah. teachers and then you you learn how to you know you apply that exactly and that yeah. that changes your will into that direction. Yes, and uh, the one thing I uh, learned today is that I don't own my will. No. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> if you would funny. own it, you could will it to be otherwise. Yes, exactly. It's yeah. like, may my willing be this. Yeah. <laughs> may my, yeah. That's, a, that's a, it really uh, the, the Buddhist teaching and the basic teachings. May, you know, the, you know, the Anatta Lakana Sutta way says like, oh, if, you, if your body would belong to you, you could say, oh, let my body be this way. You know, oh, I have anxiety. Okay, I can just let it go. Can you? No, you can't. Mm -hmm. May my mind be this way. Can you stop being angry? No, you can't. The only thing is, so it's like, listen to the teaching and say, yep, I'm the, what do I do now? Add softness into it. Remember what say, you know, I'm not being smart now. All those things. Keep, keep listening to them and keep, keep practicing it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the, the other question. <laughs> okay, so let's is, go to the question. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Uh, this is in relation to you, uh, your uh, problems with the contractors. Could you have had um, another householder, perhaps, who uh, would, uh, you know, liaise with them, so mm. you don't have to do it? We're taking volunteers. Yes. I. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You I'm have to very be very committed. <laughs> no, yeah, obviously, sure. Um, I understand what you're saying. Um, we have a very, very good team behind me who are, you know, they taking time off from the work. Um, and so much time now people have put into that and they're very committed. And that's if you ever, you know, decide to do something in the Buddhist society, it's a great, wonderful, please, you know, help us. You know, society is always, we need people who do certain things, but you commit. And we have a, Beautiful people who are behind us who are very, very committed. Um, but the, the problem there is uh, um, they cannot be there every day. And I, I live right, you know, right next to it. So I go there and I, that's my expertise. I used to be in a building, so they trust me to be that. And I feel that I'm, you know, we're the customer maybe. So uh, it, it's all right. It's, I mean, it, it, it was just... It's a learning experience, and you know, in a few years' time, I can look look at it. That it's uh, it's uh, really it was a wonderful thing we did. It hurts now. I, I recognize that, and it's. I mean, I need to put more effort into into my practice now, and I have to ask forgiveness for other people if I get angry with them, and we move on. And these these young fellows who were doing, I said, I don't feel angry at you, and they. I said, I, we, I hope they can keep working for us because they are now going to do well. They, they are going to do a good job because they know we, we are expecting certain things and they, um, we appreciate them being there. So they're learning as well. There's, uh, it's just some sorry. Yeah. Uh, thank you for sharing the difficulties yeah. you had this week. It brings up a few important points for me. Uh -huh. Firstly, as Buddhists, 
we tend not to be assertive. We yeah. tend we feel that we shouldn't be assertive. Mm. And there's this, I suppose it's a cultural thing about being passive yeah. and accepting things. Mm. And even though um, the work was, from what you said, was shoddy, mm. um, that accepting that and not speaking up. So it's really good, this, um, um, this Buddhism, this assertive Buddhism, because um, it, it brings in a lot of other points mm. with um, um, uh, abuse yeah. among the um, sangha um, in, that's happened in other countries. Yeah. Uh, with, um, and, and so it has sort of going under the radar a bit. Never, never, ex ex you know, uh, ex accept um, abuse. Uh, we should never have abusive uh, teacher teachers in the, uh, the Buddhism and we should never have those things and and those are the things where you just have to say now that's enough you have to stop and uh, I would be horrible um, what do you call these ones where um, cult leader because I, I'm always thinking about what other people are you know how so hoping they're going to be well so but they are bad leaders in the, in the Buddhist uh, circles as well and we should never allow that to happen and and so, I mean, they are assertive people, and we just have to use those people as well in the Buddhist society. I'm not one of those, and it, it's not an easy situation because of that for me to be in the situation when I'm in. But we learn how to be, and assertiveness sometimes is just saying, that's enough. This is where my limits are, and one thing you can even wise thing to do is just say you know that's enough and i'm you know you don't associate yourself with these people i have to you know associate with the builders but it's only sort of while so it doesn't matter but certain people in your life you just you know set your limits to to certain people in your family maybe because it's abusive and you just say that's you know you have enough loving kindness first towards yourself you have to remember that compassion, loving kindness starts from yourself. You have to love yourself. If you don't, you don't have any way to, how to spread it outside. So have, you know, the assertiveness that because you need to protect yourself. And in a way you were doing the builders a favor because it might only be a small contract, but Look what's happened in Australia and internationally with Grenville Towers and um, 70 people lost their lives yeah. because it was really, th they were living in the cladding that was pet like it, it, totally inflammable. And it's right around Australia, there's been several high rise mm. buildings with cracks. So these people that have paid big dollars. Yeah, yeah, towns, that's the thing. Yeah. They've nowhere to live, mm. they can't rent, and nobody is responsible. Builders, after five years in New South Wales, Builders have no more responsibility. Mm. So I, like I said, I and I, I don't blame anybody. It's just it's how it works. Everybody knows, you know. You they give you they give, set you you know goals in the work, and they said if you meet this, then you know we, we keep, you know pay you extra. You start cutting corners, obviously. So it's, you know it's just built into the into the industry, and I, I certainly I definitely understand them. So, but I just said you know that's enough and. I, I was assertive, yeah. yeah. So there's one last online question, Bhante. Uh, this question is from um, Beverly, who's a regular um, online viewer of these talks. And she mentions the term gaslighting in this, uh, just to clarify that. So gaslighting is when someone manipulates you psychologically, so you actually start to question your own sanity. Mm. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I didn't yeah, know that yeah. word, yeah. So... Um, this is her question. Having been gaslighted in a cult-like community, mm. so she was made to question her own sanity by a group she was in, yeah. a community. I find that my moral compass still gives out unreliable information. I find I unknowingly act without wisdom and have hit a brick wall in my practice. How should I proceed? And she adds a clarification. This is in the context of reintegration back into broader society, away from the cult, yeah. and acting in an ethical way. 
Can you yeah. want me to repeat the question? Or no, no, uh, that's fine. Um, uh, unfortunately, I don't have a really, really lot of time to answer that. And it's a, it's a very complex question and it's quite a specific question. So the um, interesting, I didn't know the word gaslighting. I might have heard it before. But um, uh, th in those kind of situations, like what whatever leads into the kindness of the heart and whatever leads into peace, letting go, relinquishing of the of those uh, hatred it's good so basically you just have to keep adding loving kindness meta into your thoughts whatever comes okay accept it you know just have embrace it let it come if you try to push it away those things in life they get bigger. It's um, there's the very, very, very common, uh, well-known simile from Ajahn Brahm. It comes from the sutras. Uh, does it? No, it's a commentary. Uh, stories that the, you know, there's the emperor's palace where there's um, uh, ugly monster, smelly monster comes in, and then everybody's trying to push it away, and they poke it, and you know, start yelling at, it, and you know, you know, we we don't want you here, and it grows bigger and bigger and uglier and uglier and smelly and smellier, and that that's we know how it works in the mind. And that's what happened to me this week. When, you know, my monster was growing bigger and bigger and I felt worse and worse about myself. But when I said, okay, that's enough. And you, I accept it. If it's in the mind, I please just, you know, whatever mind you want to do, I'm just going to sit here for the next, you know, half an hour. And I'm just going to look at it with op as open as I can. Not try to change it. You don't... The situation is what it is from the past. We cannot change that. Future is uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen. The only thing we're now going to change are just trying to add softness, add you know, add the kindness, sugar into the into our lives and into our minds. Be be willing to open our arms into these difficult things in life where our our mind basically look at the mind. It's just like it's there again. What can I say? What can I do when there's nothing to do? Don't do anything. That's the Ajahn Brahm teaching. But yeah, metta really works. Softness works. Think, take the big picture. I like the idea. Sometimes there's this American teacher and he says that, you know, sometimes he says, I take it in uh, geological time. So take just you, your vision is too too skewed into this thinking where you always you you every you know like i said you're sitting on the beach you look in the ocean only thing you can see is your own mind you don't see them one meter away from your face it's the problem is too close it's it's right in front of you you don't see anything you just see your hand which is the problem you have to change the perception it's there. I know the problem is there, and I can see it, but it's at arm's length. I can see everybody else, and I can I know all of these people, and I can know they care about us and me, and you know we are good people. I know the problem is here, but it's a smaller problem, really. It's still there, but it's not here. It, once it's right on your face, it's a big problem. Change your perception a little bit. Take it, you know... Is this does it is it really really that important? Okay, maybe it is, but then you try to make it softer. But sometimes we make little things into massive problems. This this is a big problem. Maybe the person who asked the question that sounds like it's a big problem, and I wouldn't make it any you know that it's not a big problem. But you just have to keep at it and keep 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 make. Um, uh, Allowing it, you just have to allow it. Don't don't try to push it away. Da, da, da. Thank you for listening, and, and we see you outside. Sorry, sorry, sorry.